I now call upon our next guest, Sister Aisha, who will be sharing her thoughts and experiences of her journey to faith. Sister Aisha. I'll do it for you. Hello, everyone. Um, Assalamu alaikum. I can't see it. Assalamu alaikum. Firstly, I would like to thank everyone on behalf of my family and friends and the Alamad Foundation for organising this great event. And I would also like to thank you all for taking the time out of your lives to help make this evening a success. My name was Davina. And I had a light bulb moment six months ago when I felt I'd come home in the second week of July. I travelled to Blackburn solely for work purposes and I was overwhelmed by the observations I had made just within a few hours of being here. The way people spoke to each other, smiled at each other and shook hands and the way they interacted together gave me a hunger to have the same and more. The question I had in my mind was, what do they have? Coming from a non-religious background, living in the middle of nowhere at the top of Scotland, never before having seen a man in real life with a beard, nor a woman with a headscarf where I lived, I thought I would have been scared. Instead, it flicked a switch in my heart. It had only been a short already time I was becoming extremely greedy, spending all my time with these people, watching them attentively, but trying not to stare. And that's when I spoke. I felt like I belonged here with them. And that's all credit to those who surrounded me and they all know who they are. I felt like I belonged here with them. I was always going to be an outsider as their everyday lives were so far apart, so I thought. But they made me feel like I belonged with them. Caught up and overwhelmed by this thing, I asked the question to myself, how do I become part of this? Little did I realise I was already part of it. They were about to start fasting and I was due to return to where I lived in Scotland. On my journey home, I suddenly realised I had just left home and felt an overwhelming need to go back without even giving any consideration or preference to my family in Scotland. Three weeks into Ramadan, I came back home after fasting throughout. This is when I became conscious that whatever this thing was that I was feeling, I needed to either do something about it or I needed to walk away because I was starting to lead two lives. It's at that point that my guidance came and my path was built and the light was shone. And this wasn't by coincidence. The opportunity came in the form of spending the most mentally intensive weekend of my life, my first experience of being with sisters. Never before had I been in such company with Apia Sobia and my very dear sisters. Inspiring and sincere sisters of Dean who had nothing but my best intentions at heart. All of a sudden on my head was a scarf. Around me was one big family. Apologies, I've got all the pages mixed up. Women who showed me respect and treated me like their own. My emotions were out of control at this point and I was extremely frustrated at the fact that I had absolutely no idea what was happening to me. I became a very selfish woman and felt a need to only focus on my life and this thing. 
I had just found my role models. Not only did I want to be like them, but I wanted to believe in what they believed in. This is when I learned I had just received a call from Allah. It was up to me now to start reaching out to him and submit myself. I was now challenging my thoughts, my abilities, my dreams, from my parents to my children, my past, my future, my hopes and my desires. What is it that I need to do? It was at this point that I faced my first test and I realized I was experiencing a tug of war. Allah versus Shaitan. To my benefit, I came to learn that Shaitan only bothers those who are on the path to Islam, the right path. If I were still on the wrong path, he wouldn't be bothering me at all. Many journeys I had made from where I lived in Blackburn by now, but on the day of 18th of December 2011, which was only five weeks ago, I was coming home ready to experience deja vu of sisterhood and brotherhood. And with their support this time, I was in a different place in my heart. I was better equipped and ready to meet all the obstacles that I knew was going to be coming my way. I'd finally reached a point where I could no longer reject Allah. So all I had to do was accept him, but I had to admit it to myself. Through the grace of Almighty Allah, I then recited the Blessed Sahara, Alhamdulillah. With tears rolling down my face, I testify that there is none worthy of worship but Allah, and I testify that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his servant and his messenger. I had decided that I was ready for this, with or without anybody, as I'm still living at the very north of Scotland, and I had not planned to leave there until my parents passed away and my children were going to university. However, I'm now facing a new challenge, a challenge from Allah, who has now pre-planned my life. Replanned my life, sorry. My struggles have just begun. What do I do about my elderly parents, my two young children, my job, my old life? Because I'm not the same person I was six months ago. How do I become the Muslim I'm supposed to be, the sincere and practicing woman of deen that my heart wants me to be? In the environment that I'm in, with the people that I'm surrounded by, I've got no sisters or brothers for 100 miles and 11 hours away from now. The place I see is home. <laughs> Praying and practicing living a life of secret, afraid of consequences but finding strength from up above. The people that are born with faith in Allah are really blessed and should count themselves lucky. I am thankful and praise Allah that he has now shown me the light. I'm sorry. There is so much to learn and understand and practice and this is where I believe I have begun the test from Allah himself. I am now officially on my journey of faith. Yours in Islam, Aisha. Thank you very much to Sister Aisha for sharing her thoughts and her journey towards the faith.